All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for My, My Hero, Hero Academia, Academia Season 5, five Episode five, 3. Episode three. Yes, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. Yes. Right, right. Uh, we've gotten a lot of stuff clarified from the mm -hmm. last episode about some of the things, especially I was completely wrong about some stuff there. That is All Might actually in the, uh, the right. sequence there. It was just the people weren't in order and things like that. And, right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, and the all... 8 wasn't counting the All for One and the mm -hmm. original One for All holder. And Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, also uh, that uh, the, uh, the warping ability that pulled... Um, uh, Dobby oh, yeah. out of harm's way was most definitely not Kurogiri, and Kurogiri was most definitely taken by Gran Torino when right. they go when they went to go into the mountains. The, the Gigamechia or Gigantomachia. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Which means it then that villain connections guy probably was like, All right, here's a, I can find you another portal person, which is pretty crazy. Possibly. Or, and this is the thing that I think is what, what was being implied here, mm. is that this person that warped them out is utilizing the same quirk that uh, All for One used to oh. warp them out of the Camino, gotcha. uh, okay. I I situation there. So, I don't think they're saying that All for One is still like secretly like using mm -hmm. his quirk. But maybe he like figured out how to pass it on to someone or something. Yeah, or or, or at the very least, um, it, it's a it's a quirk that maybe he he you know he borrowed or he took from. Yeah, he had multiple of, of or yeah, or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. So okay. that's that's a, that's a potentially interesting or just some kind of backup plan with some people that have similar quirks to what he had right. before he was taken. But either way. We got that stuff clarified. We have the Todoroki family situation very mm -hmm. much feeling like it's going to be front and center. Yeah. Uh, Explosive, know, potentially. Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, quite hot in uh, terms of yes, the actual right. drama potential as well. Because uh, there's the children giving Endeavor the cold shoulder. And, mm -hmm. you know, that and, might and the mom might not be as much anymore. Yeah. 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 Very curious to see what they do with the mom. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be pretty cool. Um, okay. Okay. But, Deku, mm -hmm. let's go talk to All Might. Let's yeah. go talk to All Might, like, yeah, right let's, now. Let's do that. Right, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. He can probably clarify a, a few lot things. of things. Yeah. So, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone. Now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below. Then come back here for the discussion. Okay. All right. Well, we talk to All Might. Yep. Mm -hmm. And All Might didn't know that much. <laughs> yeah. All which... Might. All Might's in a very weird situation in that we thought he would know quite a bit mm -hmm. because, well, he was there. But also, Nana Shimura seems like the kind of person who was very much like fully realized in the you know dream space. Yeah. Exactly. So, so she probably would have told All Might a bunch of stuff, but but all she told him was that that's what it is. Right. Yeah, it's there's the, these vestiges and the the, yeah. the shadows or whatever or um, the shades, one? shades. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh -huh. the whole thing of the original one for all holder mm -hmm. talking directly to Deku in that space. Yes. No, that's new. And that's I love very it new because that's that's something where it's well again the 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 whole reference to the quirk Singular doomsday singularity thing. Yeah. You know, of things constantly escalating, but also. As with the whole generational coming-of-age story, mm -hmm. it makes sense that since Deku has now taken the man the mantle yes. right, from All Might the, yeah. completely, yeah. Yeah. then it makes sense that at some point he would then surpass All Might. And, right. and while this is a This is the path towards that. This is this is the path yeah, towards that, right? Because because yeah. there's there's more to it than just power levels, right? Right. And and there's this aspect there's, of feelings. Right. Because mm -hmm. apparently will and individuality are retained by yeah. the shades yeah. in some form. Because or other. the power passes on it stores and passes on the power to the next person, basically. Which if the power stems from and is predated by emotions and feelings and such, then Mm -hmm. It's storing okay. basically all those individuals in the power so we got itself. Some, we got some Avatar State Paths mm -hmm. shit going on. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's amazing because yeah. all these characters then could actually be a part of the cast. Yep. In Which, the in the you know the interaction sense. And I'm, so, I'm so excited about that because like mm -hmm. in in Airbender, since you know, okay, Avatar State using that as a reference. Yeah. Um, 
the times that Aang would communicate with Roku, right? Yes. I loved it. I loved some it. of the they best were, stuff in the story. Yeah, some of the best stuff in the story. Yeah, but Avatar we didn't Lord. really know Roku. We didn't spend time with Roku, right? We, well, we we did. That's the Avatar we did. And the Fire Lord episode. That's the Avatar and the Fire Lord, and that was, that one, was of one of the best episodes. episodes in the show, right? Yeah. Yep. But imagine getting something like that with All Might, mm -hmm. where we've spent most of the show with All Might. He's way right? better than Roku in that sense. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he's yeah. actually a present reality. Uh-huh, like he's, a, he's, he's the father figure for Deku, he right? Is, yeah. You know, yeah. So, so if we get to that point where All Might dies, and you're going to hate me for saying this, but I want that to happen because that will be emotionally just the most devastating thing ever. Yeah, but it doesn't have to happen anytime soon. Yeah, it doesn't happen, have it, to happen it, anytime soon. In some ways, it shouldn't happen anytime soon. Oh, there's sure. so much still in their dynamic that hasn't been fully yep. explored. Yep, but... That even if slash when that happens, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean All Might will be gone. Yeah. And that yeah. I can I can just I can just picture it. Yeah, yeah. Same, if at some same. point, like maybe uh, at the very end of the uh, show, right? Deku's mm -hmm. fighting Shigaraki. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And All Might's been killed. You know, he's right, been dead right. for a while. He's yeah. been gone. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the fight, uh, glowing yellow All Might comes up and. You takes know, him by the hand. Takes him by the hand. Picks and him like, back up. Picks him back up. Yeah. You know, Galadriel style to Frodo mm -hmm. and Shelob's lair. And yeah. it's just like, you can do this. You got this young. Yeah. You, know, Midori you, know. you too can be a hero. Right. right. You know, uh, I, save I, his heart. Uh, I, I, like I, I, I'm, I'm so excited about that. I, I really like it, though, from the standpoint of the Avatar reference, because mm -hmm. it means then that like in that show, the character of Deku has new teachers. Yes. And this is something right. that, um, from a spiritual kind of psychological sense for the character of Deku, mm -hmm. there's a there's a respect and reverence and something also mythical about the idea of the past literally reaching mm -hmm. its hand out yes. to the future like through the future into the present and basically saying we will then build the stones upon oh, yeah. which you will step across it's, this river it's a, to take take all of humanity into the future. Right. It is a literal representation of what's happening constantly in society. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We are still taking the teachings of the generations that come before and incorporating yeah. them. Many figuring before, out yeah. what works and what doesn't and mm -hmm. things like that, right? Whether it's from books or whether evolution, it's evolution yeah. or or evolution or yeah, or mm -hmm. whatever, right? It gets passed on somehow, right? Yep, and exactly. hence it being so mythic, right? Right, right. So the idea that we could actually get that in a literal sense in this Within in this story, the main characters kind of mm -hmm. like you know power dynamic, but also like emotional dynamic with the power being something that c came from the dreams and the wills and the desires mm -hmm. of those that came before him. It's really exciting because I don't see it as something where it's going to make him lose agency as a character. Mm -hmm. But if anything, I think it's the it's the mechanism by which he can actually be the thing that he said he would be the promise in the, the first episode, hero, the, yeah. the greatest hero. Yep. Because he's the main character. He was, he's the one who will learn the lessons, who will go down into right. the abyss, take all the things that everyone is, has, yeah. who has come before has tried and failed, but progressed a little bit farther each right. time, you know, yeah. and he'll take that all into himself and embody it. And then, yeah. Yeah. And, and his character is literally the only character that does this already without the power. This is mm -hmm. one of my favorite things about Deku is that they took what is kind of almost annoyingly used at this point because it's mm -hmm. become like a meta self insert for a lot of right. the audience is the, the fanboy, yeah, the yeah. fanboy, like specifically, like, like Deku is not the smartest character in this story. They keep yep. reminding us that he is not the not nerd. He's the geek. He's the one that mm. geeks out about the powers and the sure. outfits and the equipment and everything because he's like, I'm going to store this. Right. It's the thing of and retain it for future use right. later. It, <laughs> it is literally his own personality utilizing what is basically the mechanics of one right. for all. It's the thing that always bugged me about Harry Potter is when you see these, you know, the kids and they're like, Oh, I have potions class, and it's like, <laughs> shut up, shut up, be grateful. You know, it's the it's the, you know, study for ten minutes, <laughs> falling asleep, take two items in a video game and spending hours analyzing which one's right. better than the other you know like like that kind of thing that kind you know? of energy Deku yeah, has yeah. that energy and it's exciting because for us we can then get wrapped up in his excitement as the audience but mm -hmm. also from him as the main character who is actually getting in some ways thankfully rewarded for this type of behavior mm. within the power that all might passed on to him and there's a couple things about that that are kind of worth theorizing about. 
Yeah, because because well, Avatar: The Last Airbender and Attack on Titan both do this kind of a thing in very different ways. Right, and, and I think <laughs> that I think that they yeah. set apart the ways in which they're different. One for All mm -hmm. doesn't have any of the. I would say so far, maybe yeah. they will, because they did this with Shinzo's brainwashing in season two, and it was a thing where Deku was almost on autopilot. Yes. But there's a thing in mm. Avatar where when you basically Avatar summon state. up all the things you go into the Avatar state, right. where all the elements are be able to be bent, yep. but you lose a little bit of your control if you haven't mastered the ability. Right, because it's it's... There's less of it that's just you, and it's more of just the them collective, all. right? The collective, and, yeah. and 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 you know that's a that's another sort of mythic representation because then right. literally, you know, all giving you their energy and them all, you know, it's power right. of friendship almost, but power of past. Yeah, and we know? have seen All Might do this many times, where he reaches his hand out, right, and all the power goes along the, the constellation, and he grabs it, and, and then yeah. even in season three, you had Nanashimura like holding the the mm -hmm. the, the, the the crystallization, like the full yep. like package in the, the the star and then passes it directly to mm -hmm. all might in that fan tabulous punch that <laughs> just uh -huh. shook the show yeah. but if deku's thing is more about how he can draw upon things maybe individually where it's not him surrendering his will right but it's about him understanding the feelings yeah. dreams and desires of those <laughs> that came there maybe it's where Mm -hmm. We get them more of that progressional, like power yep. based thing where it's then they'll go, okay, how do I go from 20 to 30%? It's right. like, well, speak with this one, mm -hmm. speak with that one. Wisdom Learn from an abundance stories. of counselors. And yes, because, yes, exactly. Because one of the other things about growing up is that you need to realize the limitations of the generation that came before. Now, we have gotten that in a literal power sense, right? Because yep. All Might's power was limited and eventually he, you know, it, it died out and he, and, and he passed it on to Deku and Right. Fred, right? Yeah. But what about as a mentor, right? right? We got in this episode a very good example that there were just some things that All Might didn't know, yep. right? So if Deku really wants answers, he'll have to look outside of the familiar, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't want a mentor to become a crutch, whether you're talking mythically or yep. in just regular day-to-day -day life. You exactly. Know, right? You want to be able to, to truly become independent. And a part yep. of that, you know, yeah, you still need to know when oh. you don't know something. So you look for other sources of wisdom and insight, right? You know what this just made me think of? What? Is that, I think I said this like seasons ago, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that if All Might kept, I think it was in season two, because I was realizing that All Might was kind of becoming his fanboy, is that oh. as Deku gets more and more into the investigation side of things here with All Might, mm -hmm. All Might will become his fanboy yeah. Kind of like taking notes and being like, yeah, yeah, okay. The parent that's like, that's like, all right, so right. I, I pay really close attention to, to the all things the, that you're passionate about. And, right. Right. To the things that my child is doing and, mm -hmm. and, and your own, you know, strengths and weaknesses but and things like that. And, right. But you can't actually do anything for him. Right. That's, exactly. that's the part that I think is really, really cool with this here is that All Might can't actually like look can't within himself yep. really mm -hmm. or, or do anything with, with that. Yeah. And I, it has I, I to be something that. where he listens to Deku and mm -hmm. takes everything in that he's saying. Yep. And in some ways, this is this is probably the the, the, the beauty of the, the show in that they're like setting up this friendship to be something where they're more equals. Right. Exactly. Than, yeah. Um, Yep. Or, or in some ways where Deku yeah. will be the one that rises up and All Might has yes. to reach up to him. I would love to see Deku do something specifically with regards to this sort of mystery mm -hmm. that All Might can't do. Not in, And yeah. not, not as far as like, oh, the power manifests itself in a way that hasn't happened to All Might. Because that probably will happen. Yeah, yeah. It, it's already happened, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but more for things of like how Deku problem solves. Hmm. Where he figures out a way of like, oh, okay, yeah. I can use I can use Shinso's if, quirk, if I get maybe. Shinso to help me out, he can brainwash me, and then you know we can get some control over my mind in that mm -hmm. way, and then I can tap into you know previous iterations, basically, right? Oh my god! Like that'd be so cool. Oh yeah, yeah. After this upcoming you know training fight kind of thing, mm -hmm. he basically like addresses Shinso, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to go for a run like early tomorrow morning?" Uh huh. And Shinso's like, "I actually." don't have time well i like i have tons but, of stuff i got going he's like okay but, okay maybe like let's plan this out in a couple weeks you know so they like push it back a few mm -hmm. episodes or whatever it's like or another like arc or whatever it's just be like like let's 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 get in touch i want to i want to have you practice your quirk on me <laughs> he's and, like okay and you know sure. what i love about that yeah what how many times would you say 
Mm -hmm. Shinso, in his, in his whole life, has ever had someone say, I want you to use your quirk on me. I would probably probably would in a zero. negative way a couple times. Well, oh. I want to feel what that's like. Uh, yeah, control oh. me, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe. But... Because he can, he can, like, he can turn it off. Sure. Like... Yeah. Like, it's not a thing where Shinso just brainwashes them and then they're just stuck there because... Right, for the rest of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But, like, but I will bet... And, yeah, even if even if there had been some that were negative, I, I, I would mm -hmm. think that even then it would probably be zero. But certainly as far as the positive side of things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the idea that Deku can come to this, this kid, right, and be mm -hmm. like, hey, mm -hmm. there's actually a way that that very thing that you thought was your curse... That can actually be a boon. Yeah, it does feel like though he's moved on from that. He yes. is he is he is matured. He's ready to use like he, even before he was he was willing to use his quirk and everything on other people when they was in competitions and things like that, right. even outside of competitions. Right, right. But I, I think in terms of also the personal struggle, there's a little bit of the way he carries himself here with yes. countenance and the fact that he spoke to everyone in such a way, mm -hmm. in such an honest and vulnerable way about how desperate he was here. Yep. That. I, I feel like in in a lot of ways he might have overcome most of that mental emotional yeah. hurdle because of what okay. Deku did, mm -hmm. you know, or just because of what really yeah, that, that whole that whole fight really in, in season two mm -hmm. meant for him. Right, because yeah, because Shinso Shinso was never really like insecure with how he interacted with other people, but he didn't really tell people. That's true how he truly felt about his quirk. Yeah, at least like, with the little that we got, yeah. Right, like, yeah. and that was and that was something where, you know, then with Deku, that sort of brought it out, which is, you know, of course ironic because Deku didn't originally have his quirk anyways, but... Yeah, yeah. that was why the episode was so perfect. His, exactly, yeah. It's, it's the just, irony of it, it's, yeah. It's, it's poetry. It's poetry, um, yeah, yeah. But now we have this whole arc with versus battles. Yeah, and I think that this is not necessarily going to be an arc. This is just oh, yeah. this is just the this is just the school stuff getting focused here because it feels they very... they did all the world stuff in the first mm. episode. And now they're just reminding us this is my hero academia. So right. what are the kids doing with regards to school? Sure. It feels more like if anything we're catching up with just how much time has passed with regards to the students in general. Oh, okay. So we can see maybe this quirk singularity kind of stuff a mm. little bit mm -hmm. in action. And I think what it's really going to be is just to show that, hey, Class 1A, Class 1B has gotten a lot better because they're actually showing all their names. Yeah. Well, they're and, probably going to then show almost all their quirks. And given the fact that we ended the episode in one of the fights, mm -hmm. that makes me think that there is, even if they don't go crazy in detail into each and every, like, versus battle, right? right? Which they could. Which they, they could. But they could eight, also do, like, with eight four people in one on each episode. Side, yeah. yeah, they could totally do four in one episode. Yeah. But it makes me think that they're not going to completely blitz past them, right? Uh, it's that that they're actually going to spend the time yeah. on them because they want to showcase that, yes, Class B has grown mm -hmm. and that these are, even if they're caricatures, mm -hmm. we want you to remember them and know that they're out there in the world, right? right. Because they might be called upon uh -huh. you know, later in the season. Because when this turns into all-out war, when yep. it gets to the point where all of the adults are gone or just or aren't, right aren't capable right right exactly alone, right you know? this is the next generation of heroes yeah and so we need to know about them now because this is basically like mm -hmm. i'm i'm getting the vibe that this is almost like the 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 roster of like hey when, if my when, hero when the end of the world is coming exactly these are the these are the boys and girls and and characters we can start and checking once. off potentially Mm -hmm. A big from a big list. I I don't think that they. I don't think that based on how long this show's gone this far, mm -hmm. I don't think that they're really willing to kill any of the kids. And I that's, don't. That's, I don't think so either. Yeah. That's, but that's, if yeah. if it ever does get to that point, if it really goes on for a long time, eventually these kids will stop being kids, right? No, no. I get you. I'm mm -hmm. just meaning. Remember Ingenium or Ingenium? Yeah. He was the closest thing we had to a kid that died and. And really, he kind of should, he have, should died. have died. He but, should have but, died. But the, but yeah. the point is, is genius that, should have died. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But 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 that's that's more the thing is mm. that I I I really feel like that you're you're you're, you're yeah. like right on the money. Regardless with the idea of what of these, these specific consequences are, you right? Know. But the idea of them being the roster to mm. hold back the the end right. of the world, basically, because war's coming. Or yeah, like or at the very least, like. We've talked so much about how hero society doesn't work the way it's currently structured in the long term, mm -hmm. and that's been set up since season two. Yeah. Um, 
that it's looking at where we're going to have another societal destabilization and crumbling right. and thus something needs to be built back on top of that. Mm -hmm. And these kids will probably be the main allies of that new kind of structure. Right. Whereas there might actually be heroes. And this is where I think there's really a thematic thing that's brought up here is that oh. Ida gets so like uh -huh. frustrated oh, about the that. idea of, yeah. wait, 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 to am them we're hero heroes or, villain? or am I a hero? Ah, like, what? this is so confusing. And then, it, Momo's just like, just consider yourself the hero. Like, right. Like that's, that's what everybody that's, does. Right. Right. That's what everybody that's does. What literally, everybody, everybody does. does. It's it's if something anything, that's so chilly. Like, like the the <laughs> biggest about. the the biggest problem that I hear people talk about usually with that they have with MHA uh -huh. is that they don't take the villains seriously. You know. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. They don't take the heroes seriously. Oh. Oh, maybe, or or I guess, well, mm -hmm. well, or let me rephrase that: that okay. they that they don't feel like they really know the villains as characters, ah, right? Okay, sure, sure. With situations like Dobby totally not being a Todoroki, with situations like what we got with All for One and Shigaraki, right? Yeah, that's that, that's that where dynamic, we got some right? good stuff. We got some really good stuff with that. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff with Twice, mm -hmm. good, good, high quality stuff. Oh, and right? of course, of course, Stain. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To say nothing about Stain, yeah, right? Yeah, but. <laughs> But the notion, the brava, right, right, exactly. <laughs> but one of the things that I think Horikoshi is attacking here, basically, mm -hmm. is that just because we're in a hero society, mm -hmm. and hero society will call people villains, yes, because it's marketable, maybe because it's marketable, because it's well, yeah, it's it's almost propaganda, yeah, like you know, of, like like well, type it stuff. Kind of might be yeah. right. It's like it's it's very much a Your quirk didn't allow you to fit into society. Discriminatory no. us versus them, like like we now we now categorize you as something else so that we can deal with you. Now now that's in response to a lot of crazy shit that was happening. You know, that, yeah. where where that was kind of something needed. that was needed for the society that they had at the time, but. But maybe that doesn't work anymore. Maybe that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, you're and, right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And yeah. and you know the whole thing of like, yeah, no. The, who who actually looks at themselves and says, "I'm a villain," right? It's only when you you know <laughs> you go you move into society and everything, then you figure out, wait, how how is this going to work out? Right. Because because maybe not all of us will actually be able to coexist. Yeah. yeah. Do Dobby seems like uh, at this point he's. He's, he's sure. Uh, Dobby, Shigaraki, Toga, yeah, they definitely are the. We will totally. We are the League villain. of Villains. We are the League of Villains. We literally call ourselves villains. Because yo, but, we're gonna get so many people on our side uh -huh. just by giving ourselves that name. Like that's sure. probably one of the most oh, genius yeah. things that they did. Was just oh yeah, right. It's it's the um, we are the <laughs> we <ultimate>. franchised. <laughs> right. It, yeah. You're basically you're basically claiming the very concept of villainy as your own thing. Right, like, right. So, so if you want to be one of those, or if you end up being forced to be one of those by society, society calls you one of those, and will, that means you're you're our we'll, ally. We will bring you in. Mm -hmm. You're naturally one of yeah. us. Join my brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's right. why I, I as all the as all the villains go in general, mm -hmm. I don't need all of them to be really complex, interesting characters because Shigaraki is already has so much potential wrapped up within him. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. This just series. have everyone else be villain side characters or like arc specific villains. Right, like just Dabi. continue to yeah. cultivate and build Shigaraki. Right, so that we can get that be the greatest hero, not by beating the biggest villain, but by saving the villain's heart. Right, or or by basically like showcasing that there's almost no way to save Shigaraki as he becomes an actual villain, like a full, sure. full, full. Right, because right now, villain. right now, he's an angsty teenager that doesn't really, well, you know, like. Well, season four happened. Season four up. That's true. He he he, he well, made out pretty good. Oh yeah, no, he's he's <laughs> definitely choosing his path, right? Yeah, and he's kind of more of a mob boss now than he is fully right. a a well than he is a whiny teenager anymore. No, he's very oh, yeah, much no, no. yeah. He's yeah. very much like twenty percent on his right. way. If he's you will. <laughs> he's he's robbed his first Seven Eleven at gunpoint, and you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Stop shitting on Shigaraki. Yeah. <laughs> Shigaraki's a lot better than that. No, no, yeah, but but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So we got our four v four v fours with five v fives, four v four, five v four v fives kind of situation here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Izawa confirmed. Yep. Training, uh -huh. uh, Shinso, probably, uh, probably something where it's not necessarily him doing like specific one-on-one -on -one trainings, but it's enough to where he probably told him how to use mm -hmm. the gear, and that's the oh, thing yeah. I really liked here was that Shinso came in with Prepared. gear, mm -hmm. and 
his main thing that he had that we noticed immediately was he has the uh, uh-huh. you know, the scarf thing with the right uh, the stuff that can turn yeah, yeah. into like really tough yeah uh, the, the really tough material and all tough that material stuff, yeah. yeah but he also he has a love. yeah mask that changes his voice mm-hmm. to probably someone's to that he someone heard else's. right so so yeah he he was fiddling with it so I, I'm getting the feeling that and basically he captured was, the voice in he real captured time. The, he captured the voice in real time and then he's like okay and then he probably like whispers something into it and then it you know and then it alters it, it alters it and then and then plays it out loudly right you know it feels very easy to do in this sci-fi world oh, basically yeah. yeah exactly if you've if you've got half the the technological gadgets and gizmos that that they have for their hero work and stuff right. then you could definitely do something like this but it's so effective because oh, yeah. oh, when yeah. you think about it and everything's happening in little six second intervals you know it's nice and yep. nice and snappy uh yeah and you hear your buddy mm-hmm. call you know make a call and all you do is just go mm-hmm, like you're yep. brainwashed right one of the what? things one of the things that I love about this though is that it actually introduces a new fun limitation into mm. his power because since we knew that it had to be you say something in response to him, yeah. right? A lot of people just don't speak that around. A him. lot of people just don't speak. Mm-hmm. But complications could arise if he was able to make his voice be something that didn't seem like an actual person talking. Right. If it was just like Oh, there's an explosion or a sound or, oh, what was that, right? right and it's right. in response, it's in answer, right? Yeah, then, yeah. Then he's able to brainwash you. That would be a bit busted, right? That would right? be really crazy. So the fact that he has to actually make it be a voice, right? right. So that, you, like, like there's, it's it's not just you talk to him in response. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a less easily defined, like... Yeah, it's probably something with his brainwaves in general, just, like... Yeah, quirk stuff, you know, but yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. But but it's a it's a fun it's a fun limitation because otherwise, like the biggest issue that we had with Shinso in season two before we got all the awesome character stuff mm-hmm. is his powers too busted. Like right, like you know, oh he he took control of Deku. Well, Deku should just lose this fight, you know, right? right? right. Like like how do you you don't get out of that? You yeah, know? I think they also basically by having it be done in this way, mm-hmm. they set up a couple limitations with regards to where and when he can use his quirk Mm -hmm. and it might just be in a lot of ways something as simple as that the gear needs to hear the voice therefore he needs to hear the person Uh that he's that is responding to him there's a there's a time issue there right if someone a range issue a range issue if someone sneaks up on him yep right he's done for but if he sneaks up on someone else then he can get their voice and things you know he can do all sorts of things but then also he's got the spider-man issue someone breaks his apparatus yep that's a that's a problem. He'll have to rely you know? on his quirk vanilla style. Or if yeah. people just know about his apparatus, right? Then, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. people but, just go around and they don't say anything. You but know? that's the thing. What's so cool about Shinso, and we've talked yeah. about this before, is that no villain will ever know the name Shinso yeah. H- Hitoshi, was it? I believe so. No one will been. ever know his name before he comes onto the scene, mm-hmm. and suddenly he'll be the greatest villain catcher of all time. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. why Aizawa and him need to team up, is because yep. Aizawa can make him virtually like immune yep. to any mm-hmm. villains you know shenanigans stuff unless they can you know transform yeah. their body in some unless, way unless they have some sort of like telepathic like relay tower so that they don't actually have to speak out loud or they you know. can't hear like sure yeah like which which yeah they actually set up a pretty interesting dynamic potentially for this next fight with the uh, the guy who has the air bubbles oh yeah he and he just makes a cage right but without sound Meaning that he could potentially use it on himself to keep himself oh, okay. immune from the sound effects. Yeah, just maybe put little of... put little barriers in his ears so he just right. can't hear anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay, yeah. okay. Let's see Shinso uh, get into these fights with uh, Class One A and Class One B. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see if Deku is able to prevail against yeah. Shinso in As, a rematch. I really appreciate how they're basically saying, okay, in this situation, right, where we're going to go through all these fights, how do we make it actually interesting for yeah. all the characters involved, right? Because with Todoroki or Bakugo, it's like, okay, they're probably going to win their second. Yeah, right, 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 exactly. With Deku, probably as well. But he's going but. up against Monoma, who's... Trixie, he's a, Very he's a tricky. tough, he's a tough little bugger, and Monoma got literally the best person he could ever hope for on his team. So now it's not, no, 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 it's not just face Shinso, face two Shinso. And 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 let me just tell you, mm-hmm. Monoma would be so much better at using Shinso's quirk than, than Shinso. Shinso would. Oh yeah, Monoma is he the would... most annoying, Look demands at... a oh, response yeah. Oh, yeah. troll uh-huh. to ever exist in the entire well, series. Also, of MHA. <laughs> also, 
<laughs> just look at how much he was power tripping at the very right. concept of oh, facing against yeah. class A. <laughs> yes. Imagine what would happen once he's got a mind control quirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if anything, I could see them potentially getting in a battle where it's like, no, 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 no. Monoma's like, let me pilot us all. And Shinso's like, no, what? Like, and then they, boom, they right, both freeze. Like, like, they take, they body swap. They take no, control of each no, other. No way. <laughs> they take control of each other. Wouldn't that be, be funny, though, if they both, like, the quirks were used on each other and something happened. Like, something weird well, happened. Singularity. The world explodes. Right, you right. Know, reality <laughs> just shatters. Yeah. <laughs> Time travel, you know, something. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, it would but. be funny, too, because in a really scary, dark way, you could just have it be a thing where they both just... And they both forget how to breathe. And it's just like, shit, shit, shit! Someone knock the shit out of them so that right, they... Right, so that it stops. So it stops. Oh, and, God. And they're just like... Like, maybe none of them have strength-based quirks, you know? None oh, of the rest man. of their team. Because I, if I remember correctly... Rise well, get over here quick. Right, right. If I Fix if I, this situation. If I remember correctly, the team with uh, uh, Monoma... Let's see here. Is the fifth battle. Right. The team with them, don't really of, know of, their, of, them. of their crew, I don't know any of them. Yeah. But also, none of them look like they should have a strength-based quirk. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a ninja kind of guy. They all have a very cold aesthetic. I could see, totally see the guy on the right having some kind of maybe a speed-based thing. The awesome. guy in the middle having some kind of intellect-based thing. Yeah. And the girl on the left could be anything. Like, there's... I. There's no tell. She's a I can red see. blood cell from Cells at Work. No. Uh, hey, that, that'd be cool. Blood manipulation. She's just like, yeah, I don't use this power against people because it's, it's it, it tends to kill them. There's but hero use society it. Geneva conventions about things <laughs> right, like right, that, you know. Right. But yeah, yeah. But actually, that's another cool thing. We're gonna get introduced to a lot of quirks and mm -hmm. some of the details about how they're used because some yes. of them are apparent from what we've seen thus far. Yeah. Like Ibarra, Tetsu, Tetsu. Yep. Um, even in some ways, the manga guy, you know, where it's yeah. just like, we don't How know, does that help? we don't yeah. know necessarily what it does, but it's we like can a kind weird of guess shot, some you know? things there, yeah. right? But anyhow, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion, well, you got to wait till next week because we'll watch these week to week. Mm -hmm. But if you want to watch a full length timer version of this reaction where you sync up your own footage with our reaction, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get uh, uh, any level of support there. gets you access to our Discord where you can chat with us and the community there. There's stuff for manga people in there, stuff with the mm -hmm. anime onlys in there. And also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. Yes, we stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.